وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا رب اشرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي My dear respected brothers and sisters Umar ibn al-Khattab and also his great-grandson Umar ibn Abdul Aziz they both wrote to their governors saying the most important thing to me is your prayer when they became a Khalifa both of them said the most important thing to me is your prayer says فَمَنْ حَفِظَهَا وَحَافَظَ عَلَيْهَا حَفِظَ دِينَ says a person who safeguards it who protects it who makes sure they take care of it what happens they ensure that they also take care of their religion وَمَنْ ضَيَّعَهَا فَهُوَ لِمَا سِوَاهَا أَضْيَعَ and a person who abandons it who doesn't really take care of it properly then how do you expect him to take care of anything else my dear respected Muslim? everything else would have totally not taken care of whatsoever my dear respected brothers and sisters if we see that his salah is not on point he's not performing it on time his his prayer he's not really focused he doesn't have no humility or khushu' or concentration he's not focused during the prayer then how do we see him doing the rest of the actions my dear respected brothers and sisters when this is the sila between him and his lord that connection between him and his lord he has it five times every single day, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Barakallahu feekum. And out of the five pillars, this was the one that was made an obligation before the hijrah. Before the Prophet ﷺ migrated to Medina, my dear respected brothers and sisters. And if a person starts off with the prayer, like when we find a new Muslim, the first thing we want to focus on after they become a Muslim, my dear respected brothers and sisters, they've taken the first, they've taken care of the first pillar. Like we move them now onto the second pillar. So there's other stuff. But we don't focus on first thing, khalas, yeah brother, we need to focus on circumcision or something. We start off with what? With the prayer, my dear respected brothers and sisters. We start off with the prayer, my dear respected brothers and sisters. For if a person starts to perform the prayer, and truly if they give the prayer its due right, what happens? All of their sins, all of their weaknesses, everything they find difficult, they slowly start to give them up. Slowly start to be made easy for them. This is why when the Prophet ﷺ was asked about a person who performs the prayer at night and in the morning, they steal. They steal. What did the Prophet ﷺ say? He said, soon his prayer will stop him from that. Soon his prayer will stop him from stealing. As found in the authentic narration in the Musnad on the authority of Abu Huraira. So my dear respected brothers and sisters, when we find a person taking care of their prayer, giving it its due right, performing it, each one of them, during its correct time, we find that bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, it will be a great help and a defense mechanism and a shield from a lot of haram. A lot of haram, you see that it will prevent the individual bi'idhnillahi ta'ala from a lot of haram. Insha'Allah ta'ala, my dear respected brothers and sisters. And anyone who's seen a person after they start practicing or they become a Muslim, if their prayer is on point, you see within a very short space of time, you start to see everything else falling into place. Falling into place. And subhanAllah, if you just think about it, that when a person performs the five daily prayers, you can't just say, okay, so I perform, I'm tired right now, so let me just perform Isha. And then before I go to sleep, let me perform Fajr. And then when I wake up at 9 o'clock, let's pray Zuhar. Oh, you know what? Forget about that. Let's just perform all five in one go. That's even easier. Can a person do that? They can't do that, my dear respected brothers. So even the prayer, you see that a person who is able to perform each and every prayer and give it its jura at its prescribed time, 
even in terms of organization, they'll be a very organized individual. In the Allah, my dear respected Moses. And this is how all of if a person looks at all of the pillars of Islam, they find them. Fasting is not any month we want. It's in a specific month, in a ninth month of the Islamic calendar. Hajj, again the same thing. It's in the final month, my dear respected Moses. A person can't say, Khalas, you know what? I feel like going for Hajj. I have enough money. Let's go perform Hajj. The same applies for Zakah. All of these things push for organization in a person's life as well, my dear respected Moses. It's not that everything is done. Whenever, whenever a person wants to do it. Now, the goal is here, my dear respected brothers and sisters, is that what we plan to do is to shed some light with Allah's permission alone on the statements of the prayer. And this is, my dear respected brothers and sisters, this is not a comprehensive class here. So let me say that from the beginning. This is not a comprehensive class. We, the goal is not to make sure that every little thing, there's no need for you to do any reading, no need for you to listen anymore. Yeah, this is just a mabda. We're only beginning here. This is the beginning, inshallah, and an entrance, and we're entering you into this new topic, inshallah ta'ala, for those of brothers and sisters who haven't entered into this. But then after that, they need to take some time and expand upon what we start off in this class, inshallah ta'ala. So first of all, my dear respected brothers and sisters, at the beginning of a person's prayer, it's important that when you're about to perform the prayer, try to f- make sure you have some spare time. What do we m- mean? Make some time for yourself. Don't just throw yourself in the prayer and you're, you're focused on this, you're focused on that. Make sure, try your best, my dear respected brother and sister, to clear your mind. Because now, it's just like if you're about to meet someone important, this is from the creation, let alone the creator of the heavens and the earth, my dear respected brothers and sisters. If a person's about to go meet someone important, they're not gonna, okay, so you know what, my button, I need to, my button was undone, so you know what, I need to swipe my button. And my hat's not really on straight, so I need to make sure my hat's on straight. A person's not gonna do that. Before they go meet them, they're gonna go sort that out, are they not? So it's not that during the prayer they're gonna be playing around and doing this and doing taqrib and everything that they should have really taken care of before they start off the prayer. So that when they stand in front of their Lord, they stand with humility. They stand knowing that now I am about to converse secretly. I'm about to converse with the Lord of the world, with my Creator, my dear respected ones. So as soon as a person says, Allahu Akbar, and the action, we're not going to do the actions here. We're dealing with the statements, my dears. As soon as a person says, Allahu Akbar, literally they'll translate it that as Allah is the greatest. When a person says that, it's vital, my dear respected brother and sister, that the heart corresponds with the statement. The heart corresponds with the statement. Right from the beginning. Right from the beginning. As Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says that, and this is the reality of near enough all of us, unfortunately. And we ask Allah Jalla wa'ala to forgive us for our shortcomings and to give us the ability to truly at least try our best to give the prayer its due right. He says, Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah says, that it's like a person who wanted, who made a booking with the king, tried very hard to make an appointment with the king. Eventually he got that appointment. So what happens? As he's about to enter upon the king, then he has some people working under him. So what does he do? He starts to fidget and busy himself, occupy himself with things that he knows that will enrage, that will really upset the king. But what does he do? Instead, he sends those people who are under him and he says, you guys go to the king and just ask him to excuse me. What is he trying to say? He's trying to say, my dear respected brother and sister, that when you and I perform the prayer, we face the qibla of our face. Our body, entire body is facing the qibla. But where is our heart? Where is the heart, my dear respected brother and sister? The heart as Ibn Taymiyyah and others, they quote on the Sahabi, radiallahu ta'ala, Abu Hurairah, that the qalb is the malikul a'za. The heart, is the king of the limbs. If the heart is sound, the limbs will be sound. But if the heart is corrupt, the limbs will follow. They'll also be corrupt, my dear respected Moses. And this is actually mentioned, we can derive this from the hadith of Mas'ud, also in Bukhari and Muslim. The point is though, is that when we perform the prayer, we look from a person 
who's walking past you, it looks like, mashallah, this guy is really in the prayer. Because they're facing, they're looking in the place that they're about to perform the prostration. They seem like they're really focused. But where is their heart? Their heart is focusing on something completely different. In fact, they may have traveled the entire globe and returned in that one prayer, my dear respected brother sister. That's why when a person... Okay, so what did the imam say? Allah wa First rakah. Well, I think maybe I got this verse. Second rakah. Wallah. Third. Obviously, there's no... The imams are going to recite loudly in the third. But the question is, my dear respected brother sister, is that... When a person enters into the prayer and they say Allahu Akbar, is you basically what you're trying to say is Allah is greater than anything that I can think about right now. Right now, I need to give all of my attention to my Lord and forget about everything else. Otherwise, if a person doesn't genuinely believe that with their heart, my dear respected Muslims, then it's as if to them they say other things are more important to me. And thinking about my Lord. This is why I'm thinking about them. Obviously, otherwise, they wouldn't be thinking about them, my dear respected brothers and sisters. And when the heart, when the heart corresponds, meaning it's like simultaneously they connect. Say, Allah is greater than everything. I can't focus on anything except my Lord, except for my Lord right now. These are the few minutes that are dedicated, and I have to give full, make sure that it's full of quality. For my Lord, what happens? The Arrogance, the attire and the garment of arrogance is also removed. For when you're a slave of Allah Jalla wa Ala, it's important that a person stands with humility and they dedicate their heart and all of their limbs to the Lord, my dear respected brothers and sisters. So they start off with saying, Allahu Akbar. And they remove all of the thoughts other than Allah Jalla wa Ala. And then try their best, my dear respected. And the good thing is, my dear respected brothers and sisters, is that you have, if you miss out, this Allahu Akbar, this takbir, alhamdulillah, you got the next takbir. At least you still got the next takbir. If a person's trying their best, you miss out this takbir. When you're going to record, tayyib, alhamdulillah, it's a, it's a wake up call, refreshing your memory that, you know what, I've got a second chance. Let me try, at least try the rest of the two rakahs or three rakahs, make the most of it. Let me try to make the most of it. After this, my dear respected brothers and sisters, when a person says this with their heart and tongue, they come out of that heedlessness. That heedlessness. And now they're focused entirely on their Lord. And then they start to greet Allah Jalla wa Ala and praise Him in a way that befits a king. Just like when a person wants, they, want, they enter upon a king, they have some needs that they want to ask for. But before that, they want to make sure that they've got some nice things to say. And this is most befitting for Allah Jalla wa Ala, my dear respected brothers and sisters. So a person starts off, and there's two du'as that we'll mention insha'Allah ta'ala. In terms of the dhikr that is recited directly after a person says, Allahu Akbar. The ayah they say, Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdik. And this du'a, which is one of the most famous, if not the most famous du'a, generally speaking, Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdik, and it's narrated as the statement of Umar, the Khalifa, Rashid Umar radiallahu ta'ala an. That Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik wa tabarak asmuk wa ta'ala jadduk wa la ilaha ghayruk. So Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik that you are glorified, O my Lord, and praised. Here, the first part, Subhanak Allahumma, you're basically freeing Allah from any type of imperfections, that He's far above having any deficiencies or imperfections or anything like that. He's not like any of His creation nor does he have any deficiencies in any of his attributes or anything similar to that. And then when you say, وَبِحَمْدِكْ then you're affirming perfection. And the perfection that Allah جَلَّ وَعَلَى has my dear son. That to you belongs all praise. This is how it starts off. سُبْحَانَكَ اللَّهُمَّ بِحَمْدِكْ Then he says, وَتَبَارَكَ اسْمُكْ And your name is what? Is blessed. And meaning, my dear respected brothers and sisters, that Allah, Allah جَلَّ وَعَلَى His name is full of blessings and this is why when a person slaughters an animal becomes halal slaughter a sheep becomes halal when you mention Allah's name when you mention Allah Jalla wa Ala his name when you eat food the same applies if a person doesn't say Allah's name it becomes extremely problematic the shaitan also has a share when you eat when you, when you forget to say Allah's name when you slaughter now 
it becomes extremely problematic in terms of eating the food now my dear respect to my sisters and the same applies to when a person performs wudu when you say bismillah according to some of the scholars if you don't say bismillah your wudu won't even be valid it won't even be valid and according to other scholars it will be more complete it will be more complete the same applies even when they're having relations with their wife my dear respected my sisters it's found in the narration in Bukhari and Muslim that this is also from the ad'iyah from the du'as and the supplications when a person's about to have relations when they're going to have relations with their wife if they want if they don't want the shaitan to have influence on the child as if they were to have a child from that my dear respected mom sisters so subhanakallah mihamdik wa tabarak asmuk wa ta'ala jadduk now here exalted is your majesty meaning that allah jalla wa ala's magnificence and his greatness there's nothing like it my dear respected mom sisters yet none of the creation have anything like it and then finally wa la ilaha ghayruk and there is none worthy of worship besides you and this is the shahadatain to be honest with you this is from the shahada we say that we affirm we negate one thing and we affirm one thing what do we negate we say that there is none worthy of worship and then we affirm except for allah the supreme the one and true lord so this is this is the ending another dua and this is the most authentic dua to start off the prayer with Allahumma ba'id bayni wa bayna khatayaya kama ba'adta bayna al-mashriqi wa al-maghrib that oh Allah separate me separate between me and my sins yeah, make, the, make a distance distance is like as if distance and separate me from my sins kama ba'adta bayna al-mashriqi wa al-maghrib just like you split up and you separate it between the east and the west and generally speaking when people talk about exaggerated comments what do they say it's like between the earth and the heavens or they'll say between the east and the west showing like an exaggeration in separation and being distanced my dear respected Lord and sister so the same applies here that you're saying that oh Allah distance and separate me from my sins so I don't perform them that's the whole purpose so I don't perform these sins but then, if I perform them, this is the next part of the dua. Allahumma ba'id wa bayna khataya kama ba'at bayna al-mashriq al-maghrib. Allahumma naqqini min al-khataya kama yunaqqa thawb al-abyadu min al-danas. Oh Allah, if I end up doing the sins though, then cleanse them. Cleanse those transgressions, those wrongdoings of mine, the sins that I do. Kama yunaqqa thawb al-abyadu min al-danas. Just like you clean a white thawb from any type of impurities. You know, you find a white thobe, my dear. This is not a white thobe, by the way. This is a blue thobe. Yeah? But I'm saying if a person had a white thobe, my dear respected my sisters, then in the summer specifically, or in fact throughout the year, to be honest with you, you find that as soon as you find a mark on it, it's like from, a, from really far away, you can notice it. So you're asking Allah that whatever I have, just remove them. Like, please forgive them for me. Please forgive them for me. And then on top of that, not just forgive them. First of all, you're saying, please allow me not to do it. Secondly, if I do it, and forgive them and thirdly Allahumma khsil khatayaya bil ma'i wa thalji wal barad if I do it don't just forgive them but also remove all of the effects of the sin wash them out with water and ice and frost yani remove them completely it's like an exaggeration of removal of sins my dear respected my sister after that it's befitting that the fact that you, my dear respected brother or sister, have stood up in front of your Lord, this is something extremely beloved to Allah Jalla wa'ala. The shaitan is not happy. The fact that you've actually made it this far, he's not happy about it. So what does he want? He wants to make sure, okay, alhamdulillah, the fact that you're here, that's, that's, that makes him sad. But what can he do? What can he do? He can at least divert your heart throughout the entire prayer entire prayer so really you're there but you're not really there in terms of your heart you're not, your heart's not there it looks like you're there but you're not really there your heart's heedless my dear respect so what does a person do at this time it's pertinent it's of great importance that they seek refuge and protection and shelter from Allah a'udhu this is what it means oh Allah is basically I'm seeking a'udhu billah I'm seeking refuge shelter protection from you oh my lord from the shaitan al-rajim 
Yeah, and then shaitan, we can go on in terms of where everything's derived from, etc. But in brief, my dear respected brothers and sisters, the shaitan, who is the accursed, who Allah Jalla wa Ala cursed, and who is far away from the mercy, from the mercy of Allah Jalla wa Ala. Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, he told Ibn al-Qayyim, he said that when you have a dog who's about to just pounce on you, he's about to attack you. So instead of trying to fight with it, just go speak to the owner. To the owner, and you, you grab hold of it. You can't do anything. The dog gonna, is, it might start jumping. It might, no, no, just get down. Oh, that's it. Finish it. So the same applies, my dear respected my sister. When a person seeks refuge in Allah from the shaitan, they don't need to try and struggle. They ask the Lord of the shaitan to sort it out. Take it away from me. Don't let it influence me. Oh Allah, push it, distance it from me. Don't allow it to have any effect or influence on me whatsoever. And then a person starts to seek the blessing from Allah Jalla name, say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. That in the name of Allah, seeking blessing of Allah, and generally when you say Bismillah, then whatever you're going to do, that's what that's what it means. Meaning in the sense that if you're gonna recite now, you're gonna say it's like in the name of Allah I'm I'm going to recite. I'm reciting. So in this case, you're saying, the name of Allah I'm reciting, and then you're mentioning two other names. Allah, my dear respected brothers and sisters, this is a name exclusively to Allah Jalla wa'ala. And according to some of the scholars, this is the greatest name of Allah Jalla wa'ala. The one that if a person calls Allah through this name, he'll answer him. He'll answer him. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahman is another name which is exclusive to Allah Jalla wa'ala. It cannot be used for any of the creation. And it, a person learns the vast mercy of Allah Jalla wa'ala. The vast mercy of Allah. And through the next name, Ar-Rahim, which is a name which is Mushtarak, is used for both Allah as well as the creation. As well, for Allah as well as the creation. It's talking about Allah Jalla wa'ala allowing His mercy to reach His creation. Then we start off with Al-Fatiha, because obviously every Salah has to have Fatiha, my dear respected Moses. So we start off with Al-Fatiha. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. We'll try and make it brief, otherwise we can go on for a very long time. But Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. The Al in Alhamdu encompasses all types of praise, my dear respected Moses. All types of praise. So when you're saying all praise belongs to Allah, and when a person really recites this with their heart as well as their tongue, the amount of ni'am, the amount of bounties that were showered in on a daily basis, all the time in fact, forget on a daily basis, is unbelievable. SubhanAllah, like some of the ulama of the past, they said that the things that Allah has prevented from me, that requires shukr as well. What does he mean by that? He means that in the sense that if you are, for example, say you are, you are a person who is average in terms of their wealth. If Allah blessed you with an amazing amount, of, like abundant wealth, perhaps this would have been the means for your deviation. That you would have actually deviated and be far away from Allah due to that. You don't know, my dear. Sometimes as some of the ulama of the past, they mention that some people, Allah, He blessed them with wealth. If He was to make them poor, it would probably affect their religion on an unbelievable scale. And the same applies, some people... If they kept with basic wealth, if they were blessed with wealth, perhaps this would have been the destruction. Perhaps this would have been the destruction. And the things, like there was one poor person who came to one of the ulama of a past, from the Salaf, and he said that, you know, he's complaining that he's got no money and this and that. So he said, okay, so what about if we took your eyesight? We gave you 10,000 for that, would you be okay with that? He said, what about your hearing? If we gave you 10,000 for that, would you be okay with that? He said, no. I wouldn't said that what about your arms then if we took your arms off we gave you 20,000 for that would you be alright with that he said no he said why are you complaining for this if you've got 40,000 worth of merchandise in your body why are you complaining for this why are you complaining and the reality is my dear respect even the fact the way people look at us the way people speak to us and they speak to us in a nice way this also requires shukr my dear respect my sister the fact that they look at you and they don't, they don't know about your weaknesses. They don't know about your, uh, the darkness in your heart or anything similar to that. And people look at you and they think so positive of you. This also requires shukr, my dear respected brother and sister. Otherwise, every sin that you've done, if it was written on your face, you, you wouldn't, 
It wouldn't be so easy to, to stand in front of people or to walk past people or to even shake hands with people, my dear respectives. So all of this, it requires shukr. As Imam Ibn Jarir al Allah mentions, that the countless blessings, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا If a person was to count the blessings of Allah and the bounties, they would never be up to the unlimited, my dear respectives. So all of them, a person's thankful for them. Alhamdulillah, they, be, lillah, they belong to Allah, a Rabb, who is the Lord, and the Lord, my dear respected brothers and sisters, includes three main things, that He is the Creator, He created everything, he created us and all of our actions, He's a sustainer, He is the one who gave us everything, and a person should always remember this, the second one before we move on to the third one, because many of us, if we're blessed with an intellect and we're smart, we seem to always give ourselves credit, this is a musibah. For Allah was the one who blessed you with this intellect. And if he wishes, he'll take the intellect off you within seconds. Remember, give credit to Allah every time you wake up for Fajr and you see your neighbor who's struggling, مثلاً, thank Allah. It's Allah who allowed you to make it to, to begin with, my dear husband. It's not that the fact that, oh, you're a special person. لا. It's because your Lord blessed you. He favored you. So thank him, so he'll increase you. Thank him, he'll increase you. Otherwise, if you don't thank him, what? guarantee do you have that is going to remain so, alhamdulillah rabb that he's a creator the sustainer he gives us not just our clothing but more importantly the nourishment of iman the nourishment of iman my dear respected ones which is priceless which is priceless yeah which is absolutely priceless if a, if everything's taken away from you like subhanallah i met this individual in mecca in masjid al-haram in fact about a year ago taqriban a year ago and this guy from head to toe تقريباً, the only thing he can do is speak otherwise he's paralyzed otherwise he's paralyzed otherwise he's paralyzed you know what he said he said when I could move all of the limbs in my body this is when I was always there was always something missing in here there's always something where missing in my heart he said now when I can't move nothing at all there's nothing to move he goes now I found inner peace this is what he said he said now I found inner peace what does that show, my dear respected brothers? It shows that just because, just because, my dear respected brother and sister, a person can walk and you're healthy and you're wealthy, does that necessarily mean that you're really feeling good in the inside? Does that really mean that you've entered into the jannah of this world? Like the scholars, some of them mention, like Ibn al-Qayyim and others, they say that there is a jannah in this world, a person who doesn't enter it won't enter into the jannah of the akhirah. What's this jannah, my dear respected It's inner peace, it's satisfaction. Is inner contentment. They feel content. Their heart, they're pleased with whatever they're, they're given from Allah Jalla wa Ala. They're not complaining. Or anything similar to that, my dearest. And they enjoy the sweetness of ibadah. They enjoy the sweetness of ibadah. And also that He is the creator of the heavens and the earth, and He's the one who runs everything, my dearest. Rabbil Alameen. Al Alameen is everything. Is everything. Other than Allah Jalla wa'ala. Everything, there's Allah and there's everything else, my dear respected Moses. He's the Lord of everything that exists. Both the heavens, the earth, everything that is in between, everything. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. In this verse, this is a verse that when a person feels that they lose hope, you know many brothers and sisters, they feel that they've gone too far, they've done this. It's gharib. Wallah, sometimes when you find people, sometimes some brothers and sisters, they tell you that, you know what? Someone was saying to my mom, like there was this one person who was telling me the other day, they were saying that some people were telling my mom that she doesn't pray. So they're like, you're doomed. You know, you know you've done too much. You've gone too far. I said, yeah. Who has the authority to make these statements, my dear respected sisters? Who has the authority to make this? A person's doomed and this is the end and Allah is not going to forgive them. Yeah, relax. In fact, the opposite. The opposite, my dear respected sisters. Allah Jalla wa'ala, what did he say? He says, Ya ibadi alladheena asrafu. على أنفسهم لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله. The oh my slaves, oh my servants, who have wronged themselves, commit many sins. Don't ever despair the mercy of Allah جل وعلا. إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا. This is a message to you and I, my dear. To you and I, that Allah forgives all sins, all sins, my dear, without exception, all sins. The fact that your soul is in you, you still have a chance. And when people make these statements, specifically since Ramadan is only two weeks away, it's important for us to link others as well to, to, with the mercy of Allah that La, you can do it. You can do it. You can make a change. This is your chance to make that change. 
The fact that you're making, you're still alive, alhamdulillah. Perhaps next time a person gives you an advice, or maybe there may not be, there may not be a chance. You may not have a chance. Again, my dear respected brother and sister. So, like uh, the narration in Sahih Muslim, when there were two people, one person would worship Allah Jalla wa'ala, and the other person, what was he doing? The other person was committing sin. So one said to the other, he says, Wallahi, he swore upon Allah. لا يغفر الله لفلان Allah is not going to forgive that person Allah is not going to forgive that person so what happened Allah جل وعلا he spoke himself he said من ذا الذي يتألى عليه he says who is this individual who thinks he's on, on this high authority that he thinks is like he's overriding Allah جل وعلا himself what does he say what does Allah جل وعلا what did he say he said فقد غفرت لفلان وأحبط عملك I have forgiven that person who's sinning and have nullified all of your good deeds. You don't have no more good deeds anymore. They're void. They're not worth anything. So a person never feels like that, my dear respected brother and sister. Rather, they're grateful to Allah. Jalla so when they read this verse, it gives them hope. Alhamdulillah, Allah, I have a merciful Lord. I may have done a lot of wrong, but I still have a chance and He'll forgive me. Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. And we've already explained Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, the one with vast mercy and the one who allows the mercy to reach the creation. Malik Yomidin, my dear respected brothers and sisters, the master of the day of recompense is a reminder for reflection over one's actions. That am, am I really ready to meet my Lord? Have I done enough khair? Have I done enough khair? We only have a short space of time in this life, my dear respected brothers and sisters. As the Prophet said, I mentioned in the narration at Tirmidhi. Of an authentic chain, Amaru Ummati Ma Baina Sitina Ila Sabi. Says that the age of my ummah is from 60 to 70 and a few of them will exceed 70 طيب, so if this is the case and we know that we may make 70 we may never make that have we at least taken care of what we can do so at least when we pass away we've ticked the boxes that can aid us have we done this my dear respected brother and sister if we haven't then we need to make sure I meaning what are the boxes if we have children make sure they're righteous so when you die, at least they're seeking forgiveness for you. At least they're making dua for you. They might be giving charity for you. Number two, that you have some beneficial knowledge which you're passing on. And number three, what you're doing? You're passing on charity, my dear. You take care of charity, maybe an endowment project. It doesn't have to be in London. Build a masjid abroad, or at least contribute towards it. Maybe uh, build a well. Anyone who drinks from it, you're getting a reward. Centuries after you die, khair is still, you're still... Good is still being added on to your scale of good deeds, inshallah ta'ala. Good is still being added on to your scale of good deeds, my dear respected brothers. This is a reminder. Good for good, bad for bad. Malik Yomiddin. Master of the day of recompense, the day. If you've done good, you're going to be rewarded with good. If you've done bad, the same applies. The same applies. So it's a time for reflection. This part now. Here the surah splits into two. Iyaka na'budu, you alone we worship. So a person, they there's a number of benefits. One of the benefits, my dear respected sisters, is that some of the ulama mention is that when you say, Why did Allah Jalla wa ala say Iyaka Na'budu? Why did he say the noon? Why is there noon on that na'budu? Why is it not a'budu? That you alone I worship. Why is that? Why is that not the case? They say that the importance of of brotherhood in Islam, the importance of jama'ah, when you perform the prayers, normally in jama'ah, generally speaking, the importance of connection, one brother to another brother, my dear respected brothers and sisters, that the connection you have through Islam is actually more stronger than than other than Islam, than other than Islam, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Meaning, even if you're if you're blood brothers and sisters, but they're not Muslims, it's not the same. It's not the same connection you have with them so you alone we worship and we also learn from this that I'm not worshipping myself so this should be a reminder saying that I'm not beautifying my act of worship it's for Allah alone and here that you alone we seek aid from anything you want my dear respected brother and sister you ask your Lord for it Wallahi, if uh, this might sound a bit far-fetched and some of us maybe were not really used to this sort of stuff. But if you're able to genuinely connect yourself to your Lord, 
you don't need to ask anyone for money again. Yeah? You won't need to ask. Inshallah ta'ala, you won't need to ask. Person who wants to be self-sufficient and they don't want to ask others, Yalla, you have to give me this. Give me some. Bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, and they develop a connection. And they only ask the Lord who wants them to ask. Allah wants you to ask Him. Ask Him and He'll give it to you. Ask him and he will give it to you. As for a person who's always running after wealth and running after it from the hands of the creation, my dear respected brothers and sisters, no matter how much they get, they're still not going to be satisfied. They're still not going to be satisfied. And not only that, not only that, but subhanAllah, as the Prophet mentioned in Sahih al Bukhari, this surah is the greatest surah in the Quran. And this surah is a cure. I remember there was this one incident that took place, my dear respected and my sister. So a female member of my household, and approximately about six months ago, and all of a sudden she just collapsed. All of a sudden she just So I was there, so I started to recite on her. Recited a good few times, etc. And after some time, she, she was in a lot of pain, etc. All of a sudden, Wallah alam, what the reason was exactly. Whatever the case, she called the doctors, and the doctor was saying that, oh, you've got something, it's probably going to take you about three weeks, four weeks for you to recover. You need to do this, you need to do that. Perhaps start taking some ibuprofen, ibuprofen, and this and that. Whatever the case, recite for about five minutes. Ikhwan, my dear respected, we didn't recite. There was no special yani, dhikr or anything like that. It was, in fact, it is a special dhikr. What was, rec- what was recited? Fatiha. That's it. Fatiha. Nothing else, my dears. And after approximately five or ten minutes, the person was like, back to normal. Completely. In fact, forget. No pain whatsoever. No pain whatsoever. And this has been tried by many, my dear respected and sisters. Yani, the amount of stories that I've come across from people that I know personally speaking were in like excruciating pain. And the doctors told them that you don't have to do this, you have to do that. And they said this is going to take a long time. And they tried this. They tried reciting Fatiha on it. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. It's surah that every one of us knows, by the way. And they saw, they saw the effects with the permission of Allah Jalla Because it's nothing to do with the person. It's, it's Allah Jalla who cures, my dear respect. But a person, they, just like the Sahaba and the Prophet also used, mentioned that this is a ruqya and a type of a cure. A person uses this over the permission of Allah, a person will be cured, my dear respect. But a person needs to have conviction. It's Allah who cures. Otherwise, they can recite all day and night, or they can do whatever they want. But if Allah doesn't want to cure them, they're not going to be cured. That's how it works, my dear respect. The next verse, المستقيم. Then a person, my dear respect, my sisters, they ask Allah to guide them to the, to the straight path. A person says, I'm already a Muslim. طيب, so most of us, what do we know about the straight path? We know one of two things. Either for us to remain upon the straight path until death. Sahana. That's the case, right? Well, the second is for us to be increased in guidance. The reality is, as some of the ulama have mentioned, that it encompasses a lot more. First of all, to actually know the truth. For Allah to allow you to see the truth. To really see it with your own eyes. Secondly, to direct you to the way to the truth. How many people, my dear respected and sisters, know the truth, but they're not upon the truth? Are they upon the truth? They're not upon the truth. They know that themselves. Say, Wallah, make dua for me, or make this, or make that. But they're not upon the truth. So first of all, you actually see the truth. You see that this is the truth. And secondly, what happens? You're guided to the way. The way to the truth. Thirdly, the ability to implement the truth, my dear respected and sisters. Fourthly, to be given the ability to hold firm and fast upon the truth. And then number five, number five, my dear respected brothers and sisters, to push away any obstacles that will divert you from the truth. Yani, it's very profound. Because how many people know the truth, but they're unable, they don't know the way to it. And how many people know the way, but still they don't, they're unable to implement it. They don't understand. They know the way. Okay. It's like you know the way there. But why are you not there then? Is that understood? Just because a person knows that Qiyam al layl is good method. Do we see them performing it? No, we don't. So how comes? Because this also requires guidance to be able to implement it. And then secondly, how many people do khair? How many days does it last for? A day, two days, a week, a month, a year. But what happens after that? They stop. So also for them to continue to do it again and again and again. They need to ask Allah for that too. 
and then to push away anything that will hinder them and divert them from this, my dear respected brothers and sisters. We finish off this, the surah, Sirat al ladina an'amta alayhim. Sirat al ladina an'amta alayhim. You're asking Allah to guide you to the way who Allah bestowed His favor upon. Those from the prophets, those who believed in them, the righteous, the martyrs, all of these people, you want to follow their path. And what's interesting here is notice, it says, meaning Allah was the one who favored them. It's not that they favored themselves. Allah was the one who favored them. So just like you favored them, oh my Lord, favor me too. Favor you and I. And also from this, my dear respected brother and sister, this is also a reminder to remind us who are our role models. Who are, who are, who do we, who have we taken as our role models? Have we taken the right people? Have we taken the right, the people who were content with on Yawm Al-Qiyamah to be with on Yawm Al-Qiyamah? Have we taken those people? If we have, then Alhamdulillah. And we ask Allah Jalla wa'ala for all of the brothers and sisters who have taken these people to preserve them and to increase them and for those who haven't to now perhaps refresh and take a look, take a step back and change their role models Bad ones, replace them with good ones, inshaAllah ta'ala. غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين Yeah, غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين Over here, my dear respected members, غير المغضوب عليهم Those who Allah's wrath is upon. These people, they had knowledge and they didn't act upon it. This is another major problem. Having knowledge is beautiful, but acting upon it is far more, is, is much more beautiful than just having knowledge, my dear respected Otherwise, it's more like information. That may be used against you in the next life. It might actually be a proof against you in the next life. And then, غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين ولا الضالين. How many brothers and sisters freestyle in the acts of worship, my dear respecters? How many brothers and sisters they just make it up as we go along? If we don't make a mistake, let's just perform two prostrations. It'll recompense. It'll compensate for everything. صح or not? How many brothers and sisters do this? Or مثلا, we're not really sure, so let's just Google it. Hopefully, we'll find the answer, inshallah. طيب here Allah Jalla wa Ala talks about make us not from those who worship you upon ignorance upon upon ignorance my dear respected brothers and sisters meaning when you don't have knowledge and you just decide okay let me do this now for example the sajda is the closest place a person can get to their Lord how many people we find randomly to a random sajda where did they get that from a random sajda is not a sajda of shukr of thankfulness like the Prophet ﷺ would do or it's not a sajda for tilawa. After you recite a verse where there's a sajda in the Quran, you, st- you do the sajda, but they do a random one just for dua. Hey, where's that from? That's not legislated. It's not, there's no such thing of, as a random sajda in the sharia. We just do it for dua. Yeah. If you want to do it, you perform two rakah. Perform two rakah prayer and enter into that. As for some random sajda that you separate from the prayer, yeah, there's, there's no origin for that. The Prophet never ever done anything similar to that. My dear respected brothers and sisters. But this is an example of one of them. How many of us we take maybe take a little bit of the text and we just run away? Run away with it. After that, a person says, Ameen. Meaning that they're thinking positive and they're optimistic. Saying, oh Allah, answer my prayer. Answer my dua. Answer my supplication. Respond to me. After this, my dear respected ones, then a person recites a surah. Obviously, we can't go. There's too many surahs for us to comment on. Then a person says, "Allahu Akbar." I'll show it, inshallah, because obviously I know that it is getting a bit, a little bit late as well. Plus, it's pretty hot as well. <laughs> I don't want to burden any of the brothers and sisters, but we'll make sure we finish it off. Hopefully, inshallah, ta'ala. Taib, so then a person says, "Allahu Akbar," and they go to the rukur. When they enter the rukur, my dear respected brother and sister, they say, "What do they say?" Subhana Rabbi al Azim. Glory to my Lord the Exalted. Glory be to my Lord the Exalted. Over here, again, they're freeing Allah Jalla wa'ala, saying that Allah Jalla wa'ala is far above any imperfections. When a person normally meets, like you find some people, even in this dunya, generally speaking, some great people, what would they do? They'll, they'll bow to them or prostrate to a king, maybe, or someone like that. But this is not allowed Islamically, generally speaking. For Allah, this is prescribed though. For Allah, this is prescribed. Sah, for prostration in certain um, in certain laws before us, 
was allowed in certain laws before us, like in Yusuf alayhi salam, etc. There were certain things which were a bit different. In this Sharia, though, things are different. A person is not allowed to prostrate for anyone other than Allah Jalla wa'ala. So they bow, just like this is showing that they're a true slave to Allah Jalla wa'ala. Yeah, they're bowing to the Lord. If a person was to do that to the creation, it wouldn't be befitting. But when you're doing it to your Lord, it's a person, it's as if a person tastes, tastes the sweetness that I'm being what I'm supposed to be, which is what? That I'm a servant of my Lord. He's the one who created me. He's the one who's given me these countless favors. So what am I doing? I'm doing what he's required me, what he's told me to do. I'm bowing to him. So a person bows to Allah Jalla After that, my dear respected brothers and sisters, after they bow, they say, Subhanahu al Azim. Then they get up and they say, Sami Allahu liman hamida. That Allah Jalla wa'ala, he hears, and according to some of the scholars, he answers and responds to anyone, anyone who praises him. Anyone who praises him. Anyone who praises him. And then a person can say, Rabbana wa lakal hamd, that our Lord truly to you belongs all praise. After that, my dear respected women and sisters, after a person gets up and stands up properly, they should, they should make sure when they stand up, they stand up for at least a second or two. Yeah? And ideally for longer than that. The Prophet ﷺ will stand up for, quite, for a reasonable amount of time, my dear respected women and sisters. Like when we find people who are doing stuff where they all of a sudden from Rukur, it's like they go up and they don't even stand properly and they go down. This is, they need to stop doing this, generally speaking. This is extremely problematic. After that, one prostrates. When prostrating, my dear respected brothers and sisters, it's like they develop something that they go to the Rukur first and then they get up and then they go to an even lower place. The Sahaba, when they would ascend, they would do the takbir. Yeah? They would do the takbir. I mean, say Allah, why, why would they say Allahu Akbar when they're ascending? Because when you're going higher, it's as if maybe sometimes some arrogance or pride might enter into your heart. So you're saying that La, Allah is the true great one. He's greater than me. Yeah? He's the greatest. And when a person's going down, obviously, when they would descend, they would rather they would do tasbih. Yeah? Glorifying Allah Jalla wa'ala, freeing Allah Jalla wa'ala from anything like that. So when a person's saying Subhana Rabbi al A'la, that glory be to my Lord, the Most High, a person is doing that, and from this is from the most beautiful ways of a person going closer to the Lord. And this is why when a person is in this humble position, this is the closest place a person can be to the Lord, so they need to make, like the Prophet ﷺ say, to make dua. And they don't recite Quran in both ruku' as well as sujood. And some of the ulama, they mention the reason, the wisdom behind this is that because they're in this position It's only befitting It's more befitting When a person Stands up To recite the Quran As for in these positions When they're lowering themselves It's not as bef- It's not befitting So when they're in that prostration And they've lowered themselves They lowered themselves To the lowest place And the most Noble place Of their body The face Is Is touching the ground The forehead The nose So they're saying that The fact that I'm there Allah Jalla wa'ala Is far above He's is far greater than any type of imperfections or anything similar to that. He's not in anything similar to that. Yeah, rather he is far greater and far higher and in a lofty place, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Like finally, then a person says, Allahu Akbar, and they say, Rabbi Ghfilli, oh my Lord, Ighfilli. Ighfilli, Maghfira, my dear respected brothers and sisters, includes both conceal, concealment to conceal the sin as well as to pardon it to conceal it as well as to pardon it it's why in Yawm Al-Qiyamah when a person is going to speak with their Lord it's found in the narration in Sahih Muslim and they say you committed this sin on this day and you committed this sin on this day and a person is going to affirm to it and then Allah Jalla wa'ala say inni satartu alayka fi dunya wa ana aghfiruha laka al-yawm I concealed your sins for you in the dunya and today I shall forgive them and today I shall forgive them finally my dear respected brothers and sisters after this is they recite this between the two sajdas and then they say the same in terms of the sajdas and then they end, get up for the second raka'ah 
And the same applies for the second rakah in terms of the takbir. We've repeated all of this stuff. We'll go to the end of the prayer now, which is the tashahud. Say Allahu Akbar in the tashahud position. And they say, At-tahiyyatu lillahi wa salawatu wa tayyibatu. Assalamu alayka ayyuha al-nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We'll quickly go through that, inshaAllah ta'ala. We'll go through that and then the Ibrahimiyyah. Then Allah will salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad. Generally speaking, my dear respected witnesses, when you say, At-tahiyyatu lillahi, At-tahiyyatu lillahi. That all greetings of greatness, of humility for Allah Jalla wa Ala, this is the first part, at tahiyyat They all belong to Allah Jalla wa Ala. And they say, at lillahi, belong to Allah, was salawatu and all types of prayers. All types of prayers. Wa tayyibatu. At tayyibat, Allah Jalla wa Ala, first of all, is pure. And He only accepts that which is pure. Meaning from the statements of the actions of the servants as well as the statements, the pure statements of the servants and the pure actions of the servants. He only accepts these, my dear respect. Inna Allah tayyibun la yaqbalu illa tayyiba. Allah is pure and He only accepts that which is pure. So both are included. The Allah Jalla wa Ala, He's pure in all of these, all of the things that we just mentioned as well as the statements and the actions of His servants. Then, Assalamu alayka, ayyuha nabiyu. That a person is saying, Assalamu alayk, that peace be upon you, O Prophet. And some of the scholars, what they say is the purpose behind this, like Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala. He says that, that when a person is saying this and their heart corresponding with that which is with the tongue, it's as if they're addressing the Prophet وسلم, in front of them. Although obviously he's not in front of them. Obviously, it's not in front of them. It's, so when they're saying that, they're saying that, and peace be upon you, O Prophet, Assalamu alaikum, ayyuhan nabiyu, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and the mercy of Allah jalla wa'ala, and his barakat, all of his blessings. Yeah, and no doubt in terms of uh, the blessings that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has been blessed with, my dear respect, in terms of having a large amount of followers, etc. After this, then a person says, Assalamu alayna. They say, Peace upon themselves. Not just upon themselves, but upon all of the rest of uh, the righteous Muslims, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Assalamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi salihin. And also upon all of the righteous servants of Allah. Jalla wa this includes not just the human beings, but also the jinn and all of the rest of them, my dear respected brothers and sisters. And then they say, the shahadatain. Shadu an la ilaha illallah That they say that Shadu an la ilaha illallah That I testify That there is none worthy of worship Besides Allah Jalla wa ala Wa shadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasul This, this part I don't think really needs um, Tafsir because this part I'm sure everyone generally speaking Knows about this part And then at the ending my dear respected members says, Allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala ala muhammad Kama sallayta ala ibrahim wa ala ala ibrahim Inaka hamidun majid uh, both these two parts The main parts that we want to focus on these two parts To close it up my dear respected brothers and sisters Is that when a person Says Allahumma salli ala Muhammad That they're basically saying Oh Allah exalt Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam With the angels That are closest to you with The angels That are closest to you La like Abu Al-Aliya mentions Zahih al-Bukhari yeah, In terms of the Explanation of salah and they say that Allah Masalli ala Muhammad and then his family. Family, according to the most strongest view over here, is the alihi, all of the atba'uhu ala dini. All of his followers upon his religion. All of those who follow the religion. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidu majid. Now, then you also, you're saying just like you have sent salah upon Ibrahim and the family of Ibrahim and then inna ka hamidu majid. Over here, the Prophet ﷺ is being praised twice, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Yeah? Over here, the Prophet ﷺ, just like Allah Jalla wa done this for Ibrahim ﷺ, he also does it. He also does it for Muhammad ﷺ. And, and then the last part, in terms of Inna ka Hamidun Majid, that Allah Jalla wa you are the most praiseworthy, you are the most, you are the Hamid, and you are also the Majid, the glorious. And then Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad The same explanation But the over here 
in terms of blessings, even though the Prophet has passed away, in terms of the Ummah, the people following in his Ummah, if a person has a large amount of followers to increase them, increase them in good actions as well. And this is the ending, insha'Allah ta'ala. We ask Allah Jalla wa'ala, my dear respected brothers and sisters, to accept everything that was said and everything that was heard and to make an argument for us and not against us and to add it to our scale of good deeds and to forgive us all for our shortcomings and to give us the ability to genuinely make this Ramadan, which is only two weeks away, our best Ramadan and to make us, to give us the ability to plan for it from now, my dear respected brothers and sisters and to make the prayers that we perform as well as the amount of Quran that we recite the best possible, insha'Allah ta'ala, barakallahu feekum wa shakarallahu lakum wa jazakum allahu khairah.